Hello, my name is Lauren. My friend, Professor Nabil Jabor from Lebanon, is an author, a lecturer, and an expert on Muslim culture. I invited Dr. Jabor to read his book, Unshackled and Growing, for you, one small section at a time. A PDF version of the book in English is available to you for free on the website friendshippathways.com. You may also access past episodes there. I present to you the episode, Actions and Feelings. Step 3. Assurance. Christ took the first step by knocking at the door of your life because he wants to come in. Then you took the second step by accepting his gift of salvation as you responded to his knocking and opening the door of your life to him. What is the third step? Let us look again at what Jesus said. Number one, I stand at the door and knock. Two, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door. Three, I will come in. The third step is that Jesus will come in. This is his promise to you. If you have done step two, certainly he will do step three. You can be sure that he entered your life through the Holy Spirit if you have asked him to come into your life. Now something about actions and feelings. The basis for this assurance is not your feelings, but the promise of Christ. Feelings change rapidly. After you surrender to Christ, you might feel relieved, happy, and forgiven. But these feelings are not the foundation of the assurance. If you lose these feelings, does that mean that Christ has left you? That's impossible. Our relationship with God is not based on feelings only, but on much more. It feels to me that the sun revolves around the earth, but I know that the earth revolves around the sun. What are the bases of assurance? If it is not the feelings alone that assure you of Christ's presence in your life, what is it? You have assurance through two things. Number one, the promise of God in his word in the Bible. In the Bible, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Christ promised that if you open your life to him, he will come in. Did you open your life to him? So where is he now? After I surrendered my life to Christ, for three days I was afraid that he might leave me. I vacillated between certainty and doubt. Finally, I had the courage to talk to a mature friend about my doubts and fears. He encouraged me to read the Gospel of John, chapter 10, every day for the next week. When I reached verse 27 and 28 in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, the Holy Spirit gripped my heart with deep assurance and joy. Christ said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. In these two verses, Christ assured me that he gave me eternal life, that he would never leave me, and that no one can snatch me out of his hand. Right then I knew that I was no longer trying to climb an impossible ladder. Secondly, the witness of the Holy Spirit to your heart and to your spirit. When Christ comes into your life right away, the Holy Spirit begins to talk to your spirit, telling you that you now belong to the family of the household of God. Paul wrote on this subject in his letter to the Romans in the Bible in chapter 8, verses 14 to 16. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, 
but you receive the spirit of sonship, and by him you cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Remember, my friend, what I said about the one God who is Father, Word, Jesus, Kalimatuhu, and Holy Spirit, Ruhon Minu. God the Father is for us, and Jesus is with us, and the Holy Spirit lives in us. He is the very Spirit of God, and when He indwells you in a unique way, God Himself actually lives in you. The Holy Spirit is God in us, leading us, convicting us of sins when we fall down, and stirring us to stand back up and keep growing and walking forward. You may wonder what it means for the Holy Spirit to speak to your spirit. Here's an example. One of my college students was a new follower of Christ, and he came from a Muslim background. He came from a relatively poor family. His father had died a few months earlier, and he was the eldest son and the only one in college. His mother spoiled him in many ways, such as always giving him the largest portion of meat during their meal times. The day after he accepted God's gift of salvation, as he put his faith in Christ, we were spending time together. I asked him if he sensed that the Holy Spirit was speaking to his spirit. He told me that the previous evening, when he and his family were eating dinner, his mother put the largest portion of meat on his plate as usual. He told me that for the first time ever, he felt that his selfish behavior was wrong. So when his mother went to the kitchen, he quickly divided the meat on his plate and gave a piece to each of his brothers and sisters. Suddenly, he sensed the Holy Spirit filling him and assuring him that he had become a new creation. That was when he knew for sure that the Holy Spirit is in him. I know a number of new followers of Christ who say that the Holy Spirit convicted them about their selfishness or pride. Admitting wrongs and asking for forgiveness is another big sign of becoming a new creation. What about you, my friend? Has Jesus knocked on the door of your heart? What will you do? If you have let him in, do you have assurance that he is with you always? Oh, <laughs>